Almost six decades ago, audiences were first introduced to the Robinson family in the campy yet endearing sci-fi series Lost in Space. The show premiered in 1965 and ran until 68. In November of 2021, for the first time since the series ended, actress Marta Kristen, along with her co-stars Angela Cartwright and Bill Moomy, reunited in costume to promote an auction called Monsters and Friends, featuring the Kevin Burns collection with Heritage Auctions. The event happened shortly after Cartwright and Moomy teamed up to put out a book titled Lost and Found in Space 2, Blast Off into the Expanded Edition. The memoir featured close to a thousand photos from the set of the iconic series, including more than 600 newly discovered images. If you're a fan of Lost in Space and Marta Kristen, keep watching to learn what the 77-year-old Norwegian-born actress had to say about her time playing Judy Robinson. How Marta Kristen was cast as Judy Marta Kristen was born in Oslo, Norway, February 26, 1945. Her father was a German soldier who was killed in the Second World War. She spent the first several years of her life in an orphanage before being adopted in 1949 by a couple from Detroit. Her adoptive father, Harold Oliver Soderquist, was a professor of education at Wayne University. In 1959, while he was on sabbatical, Kristen moved to Los Angeles. She remained there with a guardian and ended up graduating from Santa Monica High School. Before earning her diploma, she was discovered at a restaurant by James Harris, the producer of the film Lolita. He wanted her to play the lead role of his controversial film, but since she was only 15, her parents forbid her from doing so. Despite that, Harris saw something within her that resonated with him. He must have known she had potential because he ended up getting her an agent. Through the agency, she started working in a number of hit television shows. Her first was in a 1961 episode of Alfred Hitchcock Presents, alongside future Lost in Space co-star Bill Moomy. In 1963, she starred with Tony Down in an episode of The Eleventh Hour titled Four Feet in the Morning. That same year, she appeared in her first film role in Walt Disney's Savage Sam. When it came time to cast Judy in Lost in Space, the show's creator, Irwin Allen, already had his sights on Kristen. At first, however, she wasn't quite sure she wanted to do the show. She told Fox News that she ended up mulling over the prospect of appearing in the series for a full two weeks before finally agreeing. She said it was her desire to go to New York and do theater that made her hesitate. She went on to explain theater was always her first love. When expressing her hesitation to take the role, the people around her apparently thought she was crazy. They told her such a golden opportunity doesn't come around every day. And not only would it make her career, it might just make television history as well. Even though Judy's role was diminished because of the fact that the show's stories often centered around Dr. Smith and the robot, Kristen said it was still a wonderful show to do. She explained to Fox that she especially appreciated the show's themes, which frequently revolved around family, survival, and people working together. Before we tell you more, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Kristen screen tested for The Sound of Music the Sound of Music hit theaters in 1965. Marta Kristen had screen tested for a part in the film that would have seen her reunited on screen with her Lost in Space castmate Angela Cartwright, but she was told she was too sexy for the role. Kristen told Fox she never saw herself as sexy and that instead she thought of herself as merely being a Norwegian Midwesterner. She thought her Judy Robinson character was underused. Kristen says she would have liked to have seen Judy walking around and quoting Shakespeare, something she always did as a young child. As previously mentioned, theater was one of her first loves. Kristen said she would also like to have seen Judy's relationship with Major West, played by Mark Goddard, to have been more developed. She thinks the relationship dynamic could have been more important within the context of her small TV family and the social changes taking place in the 60s. She loved her cast members deeply. When asked what her relationship was like with the rest of the cast, Kristen said she loved each one of them. She noted that Guy Williams was a great gentleman and excellent music teacher. She reminisced about how Williams always had classical music coming out of his dressing room and that June Lockhart taught her how to play Scrabble. Kristen went on to call Lockhart an extraordinary woman. Jonathan Harris taught her the value of having respect for everyone on set, both cast and crew. He also taught her the best way to show your love to your workmates in showbiz was by showing up on time, knowing your lines, and not wasting anyone's time. She described Bill Moomy and Angela Cartwright as the sweetest. She introduced Bill to Bob Dylan and would often sing his songs with him. When discussing her relationship with Mark Goddard, Kristen described him as someone who was always able to make her laugh until she couldn't breathe. 
She said that even though all of them had their occasional arguments, they treated each other like family. A great example of this was the last time Kristen saw co-star Jonathan Harris. She had just done a commercial at the time, and he came up to her, wrapped his arms around her, and while she was helping him walk, he told her the commercial she had just done was wonderful. They remained close friends after many years doing Lost in Space together. After he passed away of a blood clot in 2002 at age 88, Kristen got the chance to really get to know his widow, Gertrude, whom she described as reminding her so much of her mother. After she passed away a few years later, Kristen adopted her dog. How she coped when the show ended Kristen was at her house when she received the phone call informing her Lost in Space was canceled. At the time, she was speechless. No one knew why the show had been given the axe. It was only later the cast learned the series was likely canceled due to Irwin's ongoing battle with CBS. He wasn't giving the network the number of scripts they demanded. Kristen recalled they wanted six, but apparently he wasn't able to put out that many within the time frame they insisted upon. Irwin had many different projects on his plate at the time. It's likely he didn't feel it was worth it to put up a fight. The show was doing well in the ratings, so its abrupt cancellation was a bit unusual. It also had an enormous fan base, but it was also an expensive show to produce. Although the show ended almost 60 years ago, Kristen says she's still surprised whenever she finds out younger people are discovering and embracing the series. By today's standards, with the advancements of CGI and technology, Kristen thinks that Lost in Space looks simple, but the fact that people can still connect with it is something that brings her great joy. To her, Lost in Space represents a simpler era and a very important moment in time in the history of television. Now it's time to hear from you. Were you a fan of Lost in Space? What are some of your favorite memories of the series? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content. By the way, if you haven't joined Facts First as a member yet, be sure to look below this video and click the Join button. By becoming a paid member of Facts First, you'll get access to exclusive video content that you won't find anywhere else. This includes some of our more mature content that isn't suitable for public audiences, which includes topics like Hollywood actresses who posed for Playboy and some of the steamiest moments in movie history. Plus, you can enjoy these videos completely ad-free. Our biggest fans will notice they also get badges next to their name when they leave comments on our videos. We pay special attention to comments from our members and so do other viewers. So if you want exclusive content from Faxverse or inside access to discussions with other community members, click the join button to get started for just $4.99. There are hours of members only videos waiting for you with new videos added every month. And we're actively working on bringing even more features to help fans like you connect with other members and get more of your favorite content. Just click join and we'll see you inside the membership tab.